Hello and welcome to Say It Loud. It's Woo. episode five. Yeah. We're back in the studio. Yeah. No more Zoom. No more. No more. Zoom is your ex. <laughs> no more pain. <laughs> no <Hey>. more. <laughs> Sometimes I'm testing over reasons not to try this time. I'm, I'm gonna fight. We're back in the studio. Now, today we have some fabulous guests. It's the Pastors Kids Association Woo! today because we've yeah, got the yeah, Pastors yeah, yeah. Kids in the building. <laughs> PK. So we have Andrew and Michael Botang. Welcome to Ooh. Say it Loud. Thank you for having Thank us. You. Oh my God, I feel so privileged. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So glad to have you guys. So just to intro you, Andrew was one of our network alumni. You are on our entry level scheme mm -hmm. called the network for in 2018 yeah. and then you won our new voice awards test card pilot award for the accolades. good fellas accolades okay <laughs> you know what i mean okay and then we have the lovely michael boteng you might recognize him from policing those streets in manchester oh. but <laughs> oh. <laughs> you might recognize him from <laughs> talking about from your line of duty <laughs> <laughs> but you might recognize him from you know the biggest entertainment show in the UK, Love Island. Yeah. 2019 you were on, right? Yeah. Was it 2019? Yeah, it was 2019. Oh my God. Yeah. I was flowing flying. Like 2020 that. was just, I mean. It was a right. It yeah, it doesn't count. It doesn't count. 2020 doesn't I want count. That, I want that back. Was it really 2019 when you went? Oh, and it was a part of 2020 as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. How have you guys been doing though in lockdown? How have you been keeping? Well, I've personally been good. I've been yeah. all right. But I've been trying to stay positive. Sure. Obviously, just I've taken the time really just to hold my craft and work on a lot of things that I know I probably wouldn't have done had yes. we had the madness of being outside. Yes. So it's it's been a blessing yeah. in disguise. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. For me, it's been good too. I, I realized that, you know, it's time just to re-educate myself on things that I thought that I already knew. Mm. So I decided to go back to um, university. Mm -hmm. I already have a master's degree, but I thought, let me just do a second one. Why not? Mm -hmm. So, um, wow, <laughs> because you can, <laughs> no, I mean, so just finish my course. I know, right? You know, I didn't even get a degree. Smart, smart lad, you are. <laughs> 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 this guy, <laughs> you smart baby. <laughs> so, um, Warner Brothers decided to give me a scholarship. No biggie. No biggie. No biggie. Like Come on. So, um, big move. Can I, can I pause him just for a second? Yeah. Let's this, go. Andrew, he, Andrew does this a lot and I don't like it. Right. He plays down mm. his accolades. Humility. Humility, which is, is not a bad attribute to have, my brother. But sometimes... Do you know what I mean? Chest. With your chest. <laughs> Say it with, with your, your chest. chest. <laughs> 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 Warner Brothers, they're gonna probably watch this video. Is he not appreciative? <laughs> 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 Come on, man. Bro, if, if I got accepted to do a Warner Brothers thing and they get offered me a master, right. that'd be, you'd hear You're it. You're gonna know. You will know. Yeah. You, you get me. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Anyway. But you know what? It's such a British thing, isn't it? It's like, oh, you know, just been promoted at my job. <laughs> like we're just not. Yeah. Very. Good. It's a very English thing. Self-deprecating. That's right. You don't. Really yeah, but well, you're. In another you're very, knife, yeah. I was either born in Nigeria or America. Yeah, you're. Very, no, in fact, <laughs> yeah. I promise you. I was gonna say, like, I was gonna say, I guess, like, the Nigerian way is like. <laughs> My Every, name is Doctor know. Apostle <laughs> Buster <laughs> <laughs> Professor. <laughs> professor. <laughs> they will name every title yeah, before they come to real. their name. <laughs> so, I want to talk about. Obviously, you've been on screen. You work off screen. Yeah. So I kind of want to start with you, um, Andrew, and let's talk about the Goodfellas. So this is what won you your test car pilot award, <laughs> and they were both laughing. <laughs> um, uh. <laughs> Yeah. But it's, it's it's making progress. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. <laughs> Something like that. It's, it's been a long journey. <laughs> 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 so um, what I've decided to do, I've decided to um, put that slightly to the side of the okay. seat and work on other projects as okay. well. Was that that has been a long process in the making. Sure. Sure. So ju just to give a bit of backstory, mm. um, I had the show initially made in 2015. Wow. Sent it off to the BBC in two thousand, end of two thousand and fifteen as well. Mm -hmm. They set up a meeting at the beginning of two thousand and sixteen. Right. They said they loved everything about it, but then everything needs to change about it. Right. Got given a million notes, and then finally, so the show's about five middle class black guys mm -hmm. um, who just live life and do what they need to do. Mm -hmm. Very much a hybrid between the Fresh Prince and In Betweeners. Yeah. And then I was asked if I could make the show a bit more urban right. because the sh 
they weren't too happy with the middle class characters and felt that it wore not not they he and felt that he felt that it wasn't realistic. Right. So um, that, yeah. Let's talk about that a bit because oh what I like about the Good Fellas <laughs> yeah. is the fact that they're black middle class kids. Yeah. Now I think when well what we see in the media of the black experience is usually violent or gang or or poverty related. Yeah. So I also think that there's a lack of understanding about being black and being middle class. Like you can be those two things. And we do have a black middle class in this country. Yeah. Um, and I think, I'm sure you had this experience as well. Obviously I grew up watching My Wife and Kids, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, and they were you know, affluent African-Americans. Yeah. So that was, I could see very early on that you know, there is a middle class, you, black, you, know, you can be black and be middle class. Even yeah. if I couldn't see it in this country, I knew that like they had that in America. Yep. I also know being second gen Nigeria, you know, I was always brought up and being told like, you know, you come from royals. Yeah. Your you know, your great uncle is a king, you yeah. know, even though I'm like, is he? But okay, fine. <laughs> that works for me. Let's talk about just kind of how did you come up with the, you know, concept of 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 the Goodfellas? So it's so interesting that you said that you used to watch American shows because I created Goodfellas off the back of having watched an American show. Right. So I finished watching that show, I had a light bulb moment and I just decided to write it. For me, it felt very organic because right. I have never grown up in a gang-ridden mm -hmm. kind of... It's never been my life. Sure. And I think that's not been the life for most black people yep. in the UK. Yeah, definitely. It, 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 it happened just like... Yeah, I wouldn't say most. Really? You disagree? It, it happened like... Yeah, I mean, I a, a, lot, a, lot of, a lot of people live... A lot, a lot of people have, exper people have experienced lives where they've been involved in gang culture and crime. But most black people do not own a gun or have no, not no, shot no, someone. No, or but, but having grown up in that, so I thought you were dismissing having grown up in that environment. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not saying the environment, but I'm saying that not every black person you meet will be able to say, oh, yeah, my boy got shot. I've shot right, someone. Right, I've right, stabbed right, someone. Right, right. It's, it's not something that the majority of black people sure. can relate to. That's sure. a fact. Yeah. Yeah, but then the way it's portrayed mm, in you media, think every black person you'd think that experience. every black person, if you put your hand up if you've been shot before, then 90% of black people <laughs> 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 Which is <laughs> not true. <laughs> do you know what I'm, yeah, you know what I'm like trying it's to say? Not yeah. True. yeah. So, so that, that's what I mean by that. Yeah, yeah, that so means. it's so interesting. I, I Googled um, recently top drama or comedy shows in the UK. I just decided to do a Google search. Right. And two of them were shows which had black characters in it, mm -hmm. which were involved in gang culture or um, thing and I realised you know what yeah it's going to get to a point where if we're not careful we're going to think that's intentional because if I'm American or from the outside and I'm looking in all I, all you can do is you can base a group of people based on the content you see right so when I watch American shows I know there are black middle class families Fresh Prince of Bel-Air sure. I know that there are black middle class families that are also aspiring to do things blackish mm. I know that there are wonderful wholesome black families my wife and kids mm. I'm able to see wonderful single parent households where you mm. see black men carrying themselves nicely one-on-one. -on -one. Mm. I'm able to see so many shows where I'm watching people do amazing things. And when I come back to the UK, all, I see, all, all I'm seeing is the Desmonds from 1990s <laughs> or 80s. And nothing else yeah. will show us what's going yeah, on now. That, and is, it, that is deep, you know, because you're right. When you think about it, have you ever seen a show like that since the Desmonds? No. I can't remember. I know they did The Real McCoy, but mm -hmm. that was before. It was like, I think it's like a show where they're like in a... Um, like a sketch show or something like that. Yeah. But I, this was before my time. So I never watched it. My parents used to watch it, but yeah. I didn't watch it. So obviously, I suppose we grew up at the same time where we were watching Trouble TV, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, you so, remember Trouble. And interesting, yeah, yeah. it's interesting how Trouble TV was called Trouble TV. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And there's, you know, like, why was it called Trouble TV? I man? mean, I don't want to look too deep into it. I like, I like that <laughs> trouble. <laughs> I like that but trouble. But again, but that's what's, it's, and do you know what? It's interesting you said that because my wife and kids, um, Fresh Prince, one on one, were very, you know, the, the father figures were strong, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Were very strong. And like, my dad reminds me so much of Flex Alexander or Uncle mm -hmm. Phil. Mm -hmm. I can see my dad in those characters. However, when we turn on the TV, I can't see my dad in any of the characters that I see <sighs> on TV in this country. Boy, docile, weak, just don't have any backbone. Yeah. And even like, or for not example, present. Not present. Like, for example, Michael is the best example. When this guy was a kid, I'll say with my chest, it was one of the best centre backs as a kid, as a football I've ever seen. <laughs> my dad was presence taken to every game, oh. was there by his side all the time. Dad, Michael, kick the ball. This guy was all the way <laughs> <laughs> from, was all the way behind the half, and he blazed it top corner. The guy was good in it. Mm. So I'm. Yeah, football, but you know, money. <laughs> 
It's so, okay. God bless that. Man. For real. Amazing. So for me, I'm used to seeing strong black fathers. Mm. And what I've constantly been subjected to from um, UK media was of a lack of black commission editors, black exec producers, right. black channel controllers, right. a lack of all that. Right. I'm, I'm subjected to what people want to push onto me. It's like, mm. this is not true. Mm. It's interesting that you were told that it wasn't realistic. Yeah. Um, and again, that's why it's that's why it's important, like to have someone like you and to have you know these black writers because this is our experience. But if we don't have anyone there that's like experienced it, then you don't know what you don't know, yeah. basically. And the, yeah. the narrative is played out now. Even even our own community, we're tired of seeing gang films. Yeah, oh, over it. Look at all the blog pages. Everyone's like, it's almost like when you hear. Uh, say rap man or someone's come to make a film is that you almost assume now it's going to be a gang sure. related film and everybody's just tired now why can't we see a, a rom-com or you know just something different something yes. uplifting like a feel good a love story do you know what I mean yes Um, I think what well, Blue Story was meant to be a love story but it was essentially a gang film yeah yeah, like, yeah why right. can't we get something something different well do you know what it's interesting you say that because you know there's this, I think it's called Them. Is it called Them? There's a yeah. show that, you know, that's yeah. essentially around black trauma in America. Yeah. I haven't seen it yet, but I've seen a lot of people on Twitter say like, why are, you know, why is blackness always surrounded with trauma? Mm. And it's interesting because like, I like Insecure. You know, I love Insecure with Issa Rae because I feel like the stuff that we see on TV, you would think that like black people don't have like as complex and crazy and funny and uplifting lives as, anybody else yeah. but we're so associated with trauma and the trauma porn yeah you know is profitable yeah. essentially our pain is profitable yeah. and that's that's the problem because it's like there is so much more to us than our trauma um but only we can tell those stories but we need to be in those rooms <sighs> we desperately need to be what, what what i always find interesting is how um flat black characters are and how they're written right and the nuances and the depth that white characters have. So, sure. um, on my master's course, <laughs> come on, <laughs> there we go. Hey. <laughs> on the course of his studying, <laughs> so we're looking at um, a philosopher called um, well, a philosopher, a guy, a psychologist mm -hmm. called Youngen, mm -hmm. and breaking down his theory and breaking down different archetypes and different characters and different kind of characters that we kind of have in society that embody certain characters in films. And when I'm looking at a lot of films that are made by um, white exec producers, white writers, mm -hmm. the depth, mm. the depth, the nuance, mm. the nuances. So when you're watching a show, you can appreciate what you're not watching someone was there white, you're watching it was it's a very deeply flawed or wonderful or brilliant, brilliant character. And then I'm coming to BBC watching a show and then seeing a black man jump over a chicken and chop, chop and just punch an Asian brother in the head with no excuse, like right. with no reason. I'm right. thinking, what, why, why are you doing us like this? <laughs> Where's the depth in his anger? I don't get it. <laughs> And that's why I always say the film I love so much is Anton Fisher, directed by Denzel Washington. Mm -hmm. Because it's shown a black man who comes from um, abandonment, but really given the depth and nuances behind why he is who he is. Mm. That's what I love. I love when we're created with depth, as we are, we're very deep people. Mm. And in that way, it gives our life more meaning. Mm. Nowadays, when a black man gets unfortunately shot, shot or killed, because there's such a lack of depth in who we are as people, mm. you watch something, it's like, Oh, did you see what happened? It's like we we're almost used to seeing black death. Mm. But then let's say a white person died on camera, you can't don't post that, don't show that. we can't look at that. Uh, yeah. You can't yeah. look at that. Yeah. How dare that be posted? But with us, man, it's like standard. Yeah, that's sad, you know. Yeah. Yeah. That's not that's proper sad, you know. Mm. But this is this is a life. Mm. And for me, it doesn't make sense as to why there's such there's such a lack of depth and thought behind us as people. It mm. makes no sense at all. Mm. And even just a bounce off that as well, I think sure. what we need to now realise is that TV essentially is a lot, the whole nation, we, we literally feed off what what we see. Yeah. So if what we're seeing is all that ever, Andrew's saying, mm. like no depth to characters, that, that's literally what the majority of the population are going to think. Yeah. Like this is our reality. This is what we go through. This is essentially black people. Mm. And, and then we then get surprised that we get so many other things happening, you know, and, and this, anyway. What, what, what's your, what, what's, I'm oh, sorry, I was, I was gonna ask Michael a question. Hit, hit it, go on. What were your favorite shows growing up as a kid? Oh, all of us, 
I was what? watching that this morning. What, yeah. yeah. Oh, we know which yeah. thing we hey, need hey, to It's hard hey, to hey. see. Be, no, be, it be, it be. to me. <laughs> it's a movie. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I'll be back next week. You, you, you. Like one on How one you, you do guys. this? <laughs> um, oh, damn. The list goes on. My wife and kids. Yeah. The fridge below here. Yeah. The cars be shit. Yeah. yeah. But we can't read the message. Can't read the message. Can't read the message. Cars. You know, back in the day. Can't even mention it. Yo, Rudy. <laughs> <laughs> those are my guys. <laughs> yeah, man. Those, those are my shows. You get me? Mm-hmm. Those, those, are, those are the shows I love. So, I mean, uh, are you going to go somewhere with it? Or you just yeah, so the reason I'm even <laughs> asking this was even look at that. Mm. Michael's a few years younger than me, mm-hmm. but even his natural outlook to him was wanting to watch shows were well, black shows. Sure. And what makes it mad for me is that it's not that a lot of commissioners, people in the UK, it's not that they don't know. Mm. They know. Right. So the question I always kind of ask is, why? Mm. Why don't you want us to be shown properly? Right. And if we are shown properly, why is it from a place of trauma? Mm. And then why, when we're then shown, does it have to be from a place of the black experience? Like, mm. I don't, I, it's, for me, it's always why. And then when they say progress, we're making progress. Is then you see that there's been a massive outlet of black writers that have been given developments or commissions. Right. But there's no black controllers. Right. There's no exec, black exec producers. Not enough black producers. They're not, they're there. But they've, they've not been given opportunities. So the question I always have is like, why? Mm. Why? Obviously, I know the answer. Right. But. Yeah. We I'm still asking why. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. Well. It's true. And the thing is, with the American shows, the African American shows, every single character had depth, mm-hmm. had those nuances, had those. Yeah. And, and I guess it's a shame that, like, you know, for me anyway, I was always looking to that. That's I resonated with that experience because it reflected my own. Whereas obviously here, you have a few. You know, you you might have a token black person in a show or whatever, but that's about it. Mm-hmm. I, I honestly believe, yeah. If if we had those types of British black black British shows, like for example, all of us, my kids, we had British versions of those shows back in the nineties. The acceleration of how we're seeing things going right now would have been much faster. Like where we are now probably would have been mm. there in 2005. Yep. You know what I mean, it would have been so much quicker because we would have been seeing it in the UK, would have been accepting it, listening to black music, listening to black British music. Sorry, we've been doing all of that. Obviously it's mad, but we're now doing it now. I think yeah. I read, I literally read something today where I saw it was like a fifth of all music is listened to in the UK is now black, black British, music, black, yeah. black British rap and mm-hmm, hip hop mm-hmm, music. And mm-hmm. that's, that's beautiful. Where the culture. That's that's where we're going now. That's our culture. And people are putting respect on black Brits and the things that we're doing mm-hmm. and us in media and us in music and everything. It's wonderful. Yeah. Could have been done a long time ago. Sure. Yeah. And it could be a lot faster still. Mm. So it's, it's kind of like almost Andrew said now. Why? Why? Yeah. Why? And even just to kind of jump off what you just said now, imagine the impact that would have been made on us guys if these things had been done a right. long time ago as well. Right. It's a simple thing. Like It's, it's almost like the butterfly effect. I love you, Michael, but if I also box you in the face right now, I've just made Michael's day a good day to a very bad day. I've ruined your day. If I punch you in the face right now. Because it's very, very violent. It's very violent. <laughs> I even though I said it, punch. <laughs> if, <laughs> if I box you in the head right now. <laughs> I'm even thinking, right, did I do something to this? <laughs> <laughs> Mate. <laughs> 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 <His face. laughs> I've ruined the guy's day for no reason. Sure. So now Michael's going to go out and then go onto the street and then cuss someone out because right. he's pissed off. That person's going to think in their head, rah, what did I do? Mm. Like Michael from Love Island just cussed me out. Ruins that person's day. They go home. When he's, it's a bunch of pass on from person, not one person to another person. Mm-hmm. The lack of black content in media has an effect on how you're perceived. That's if you're constant, if you're consistently pushing out that black men, especially are aggressive, That's a certain type of way, which they did a lot in the 90s, yeah. need not get, go into examples. Right was of time. Right. But then what that does, it kind of gives you this impression that you're bad. I grew up in Manchester, yeah. born in South London, Lewisham, grew up in Manor. My accent was a bit like that, but I brought it back to... Okay, come on. A London accent. Yes. I can't believe you ever switched, mate. Absolutely. Where are you guys? No, nah, no, nah, I can't. I can't. I can't stay like this, mate. I can't stay You like guys can just switch it on like that? Yeah, man, it's in us, isn't it? We, we, we had Manchester accents in us. <laughs> Mine changed. I was in a pub one time. I was, <laughs> I was trying to move to a girl. I said to her, you're right, my name's Ander. The girl looked at me, she went, Ugh. I said to her, no, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. Accent switch like that. 
But to bring it back to what I was saying. My name's Ander, you know. My name's Ander. Okay, come on. <laughs> I was in Manchester and um, we were I was born in London, moved to Manchester when I was 11 years old and I was racially abused from 11 and all through my pubescent years. Mm -hmm. There was one incident that was more, um, that always kind of sit with, sat with me and Samuel where after school one time, a group of white boys wanted to beat us up and kill us. And we were like- For being black. Yeah, 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 yeah. let's just say it for, for being black. And we went to the headmaster's office and said, um, sir. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Sir. <laughs> Hello. Sir. So I can laugh at it now because I'm alive. Mm. But not to the headmaster's officer, I said, sir, there's a group of white boys that want to kill us outside. Right. And go, Berre, there's no murders in Berre. Surely not. I said, sir, just look out the window, innit? Looked out the window, saw these men weren't playing, so they called the police to the school and we got given a police escort home. Wow. And when the police escort then came, uh, my dad saw obviously a police car pulling up and he never even asked what have they done because he knew our character. The first thing he asked was like, what happened to them guys? And for me, that was like, it was a moment that stuck with me. But even going back to school, rather than a lot of the white kids understanding or sympathizing, they're like, oh, you think you're well bad you because you're black. It's like, how can I think I'm bad? <laughs> 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 But if, and and what makes it mad is that then <laughs> they're then using a lot I'm of the. Only, sorry, I'm only laughing here because I got that same I got that same right. thing as well. But man, I was in primary school. Then, yeah. So right. You, back then, you don't really deep it as much because I'm just a kid. I'm like what? But <laughs> right. now that you look back and it's, it's like it's, it's wild. I can't believe somebody said that. It was, it, it was constant. <laughs> you think you're constant. well bad? <laughs> if, if or if I if I was in class, me and Samuel academically were good. So one time I got given I got a predicted grade of E, E for echo. What? <laughs> not even echo, <laughs> <laughs> got a pretty grade for E and then the woman said to me oh you'd be lucky if you can even get that obviously I got an A in it in the end but imagine the whole lockdown thing that happened now right. and uh, you had to get based on your predicted I would have got E's and C's Right. when my G's actually came I got straight A to C's wow. but even me using that oh come on click click some more baby Click, 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 <laughs> click, 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 oh, smart, click. Smart lad, this one, smart lad. <laughs> but even even when I would get an answer right in class, I said, oh, no, you think you're all bad because you're black. I'd be like, <laughs> what? And then they'd compare me to rappers or people that right. they kind of were projected or given to from the media or characters that they'd watch from a gangster film mm -hmm. or a movie. It's like, mm -hmm. for me, it's like, if the shift had happened earlier mm -hmm. and we saw more black positive archetypes, mm -hmm. Even how I was seen in school. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're like Will Smith, you like <laughs> freshman to Belair. Oh, we love because, you. Because as ignorant as it that. is, a part of you can't really blame can't them. Really. No, 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 no. Because it's 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 what they saw. You're like, a kid. Yeah, you're seeing you're negative stories that push right. you continuously. Right. And what makes it mad is once again I have to keep saying, these commissioners know this. Right. They know what's happening. Right. They don't, it's not like they don't know, they know. Right. And nowadays in the age of social media, when things are amplified and you're bullied and things are happening, it's so much heightened. Mm. And you're living as a black kid in these areas and these stereotypes are continuously being pushed mm. through media. You're finished mentally. Yeah. What happened to Shakri Abdi? She was drowned Brown. in Berry, mm. five minutes from where we used to live. We, Samuel sent, um, Samuel um, wrote to um, one of the friends of the family of Shakri Abdi, she said, listen, Berry's worse now as it was in e as it even was when you guys were there back in the day. And then we're looking at the media. These kids, what do they even have to look at in the UK of black role models and figures yep. through through shows that have been mm -hmm. they don't have it. And the commissioners know right. this. The executive producers know this. The channel controllers know this. It's like rather than just saying, oh, we've got a really good outlet of black writers this year. Beyond that, mm. what's the infrastructure? I'm side eyeing commissioners now. If I'm looking at your content, and the math is not mathing, and they don't want to say it. Not it. Not it. Come out as mouth. Not but if the math is not mathing, <laughs> from then director through to writer, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the pause, Andrew, was too long. <laughs> if the math is not mathing, then there's a problem. Right. There is an issue. Right. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting because you know what? I had the opposite experience when I was in school. I was told you act white or I got called an Oreo or a bounty yeah. and whatever because you speak properly. And I'm like, that doesn't even make any sense. Are you trying to say that because I'm black, I can't be educated? Were you in a school that was majority black? No, it was mixed. When I was, when I was, yeah, it was mixed. Yeah, okay. when I was younger, it was an all white school, but when I was secondary school, it was mixed. And that even that within itself is problem yeah. a problem because with the lack of media, black people then think we come from one 
monolithic group where we almost act, behave, the or set, yeah. we do things the same rather than realizing. Because blackness yeah, is a behavior and exactly. it's not a behavior. So if you ever step out of that, or if you ever come from a different type mm-hmm. of setting, then you're you're not black enough. Automatically, yeah, you're an Oreo. You're a, you're a bounty. You're a. It's again and yeah again. But you're right. If people don't get to see, I guess, the fluidity of blackness, and all they're seeing is just violent gangs, urban, whatever. If that's all they're seeing, then they're just going to look at us. People are just going to look at us as black people and think, oh, well, that's all you are. Yeah. Before we even open our mouth. Yeah. So, um, yeah, like you both said, why? Mm-hmm. Why? Mm-hmm. So, Mike, yeah, sorry. Michael, I want to, no, it's fine. I want to come to you because um, obviously you were, you were on Love Island. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you were on the screen, honey. Mm-hmm. A, on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, your brother was always you know writing off screen so what kind of what was the story behind you going in there like what did no most importantly what were your parents saying uh-huh. when you said that you were going on to love island so um thank god they didn't really have a full understanding okay, of <laughs> my parents would be like don't disgrace me a full understanding of the type of show i'm sure if i had a proper sit down with my dad and i told him like this one actually to be fair my dad probably would have been chill it was more my mom i had to have meetings with her like one to ones, like, are you sure you want to do this? Da, da, da. In the end, she was cool. Okay, but yeah, she, yeah, but it was um, it was because obviously we were past as children as well, so mm. a, hmm. can't a, bring shame <laughs> on the family. Yeah, you can't bring that shame. <laughs> <so. laughs> Had to have that conversation. <laughs> we made it. Yes. <laughs> made it. <laughs> so when you so obviously you went on Love Island. So what was that kind of experience like? So you obviously went from mm. you know being like just a normal average Joe. Mm-hmm. So now you're like, Michael from Love Island, oh my God, like, yeah. can I take a picture of you? Can I record you on the train when you're not looking? <laughs> oh. What's that kind of hysteria been like? And obviously you you came on, you know, you and your brother came on the yeah. show. So like, you know, it's, it's even even now, ha- with it not having been what it could have been because of lockdown, it's still crazy. Right. Because even like, I go to my local Tesco's or whatever, I go out shopping, people recognize me, people stop me. And it's, it's not even just a particular type of people, it's everyone. Mm. So I, I've had like old women come and stop me. I've had young Right. Women like young boys, young like literally Asian women like everyone. Diff- everyone. So everyone. I, sometimes, um, <laughs> like for example, there was one time where I was literally I can't remember. I think we were in front of Night Town. I was with one of my boys, and one one woman, this couple women, one of them in her job came up to me, and I I assumed she was coming up to ask for directions. She didn't say nothing. I think she was smiling. I couldn't really see her face. Could only see her eyes. I think right. she was smiling. She came up to me, pulled her phone out. Just all like that. Didn't say nothing. Like, come on. <laughs> come on. Looked at the picture. Still not said nothing, you know. I was like, was it good? <laughs> was it was a nice picture. Didn't say nothing. Just walked off. Wow. Just like that. Okay. And, and that's the kind, that's the life that we have to accept now. And, you know, you always have to be happy, don't you? You can't, can't have a face like a slapped off, ass. Can't have an off day. Can't have an You've got to be like, yeah, of course. Like, even if you're with your friends and like you're having drinks, like if someone's, you just have to. Yeah. To be fair, most of the time, I am pretty chilled anyway, so I... You will never really like see me show my emotions, even if I'm having right. an off day. But the pressure more so, I feel it now because I really can't do it. Because if one person says one thing negative about me, and it's, and it, some they decide to tweet it, that could be sure. finished sure. publicly. So sure, 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 sure. Yeah, you don't want like someone doing a TikTok about that time I met Mike from Love yeah. Island because those TikToks are blowing. Yeah, oh. yeah, no, them revealing TikToks or whatever. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know you know what? <laughs> and obviously, there's been a lot of conversation around, you know, Love Island and duty of care. Were you ever con- were you con- ever concerned before you went on? Were you concerned about, you know, the aftercare and stuff, or what was that kind um, of, ex- you know, mentally, mental health wise? What was that? Me- kind mental of- health wise, to be honest, I wasn't particularly concerned. I'll be honest, but that's right. only because I knew the strength of my own mental health, mm. and I knew that I had the support of like my family, my brothers, my mom, my dad. My support network is very strong. Sure. So I never Brilliant. really struggled. But in the back of my mind also, I, I'm i not naive to the fact that I know other people have gone in and the, the environment has changed them completely. Because mm. people who are new to be strong have come out of Love Island and we've heard of so many stories, sure. even to the point where some people have committed suicide. Mm. So it's like, okay, cool. Let's not be naive. Let's go in there, make sure I'm still talking to my brothers and stuff. So I'm up, like maintaining my own mental health. Wow. And you know, you and your brother came on and there was an article about... Mike from Love Island's got well fit brothers. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, you, <laughs> you, you were. Sm- I'm the sure when you asked, you were smiling. Like, you know what? I was, for me, I was kind of like, okay, cool. <laughs> Come on, 
don't lie, Andrew. No, no, it's, like, it's, it's so they were experiment. <laughs> 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 they knew it was they knew it was you, know, you know, you know when um because we're in lockdown during the whole time, <laughs> you can't even really kind of perceive what's happening in people's reactions. Right. But I never really even beat the whole moment. I was Damn, like, okay, cool, yeah. cool, all right, it's nice, and we keep it moving. Right. Yeah. yeah, I guess you kind of went from lockdown in the villa to lockdown. Lockdown in real life, yeah. Wow. So you're ready to be out in these streets. I'm ready. To be, I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> the I've been are ready. Calling <laughs> <That's him. laughs> oh, the streets are calling. <laughs> they be calling. They be, they be calling for a while. <laughs> and I'm ready to deliver. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I want to ask you guys. Briefly, you know, you've both had experiences in TV. Yeah. How can TV improve? What would you like to see more of? I know we touched touched on, of course, you know, more black controllers, more black writers. Yeah. But kind of, what's the kind of full picture? What What do you really want? What could TV really improve on? TV, what, what I've always said is, I was forced, because of my dad's job, sure. to live in an area, Greater Manchester Berry, mm-hmm. Very racist town, racially abused all my life, but still do not have bitterness or anger towards them. You man, Amazing. the very people. Listen, <laughs> I love you, man. <laughs> I tried to break me, but I'm still here. <laughs> I actually genuinely love you guys. But even then, I had to become uncomfortable mm. in order to grow. Sure. A lot of times in TV, people are very much used to, oh, let's get this commission because we know that guy's dad. We know this. Even as the stories I hear, even when I watch shows, I think, oh, it was a decent show. And listen to the stories of the writers. I was watching one show. I was like, okay, it's decent, but why did it get the commission? Right. Watch what the writers were saying. He said, oh, you know, um, the production company was owned by a friend of mine, and I'd never written in my life. And he threw me development money, and I couldn't write. But for two years, I was writing, and finally, I managed to get it. And we're going back and forth for notes. No, 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 no. You were guided through those notes. You were shown how to write the script. I've, n- I've never been given that opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, you know, nepotism is rife. Yeah, yes, rife. It's rife. And even with, even with that, it doesn't even bother me like that. Mm. What I'm trying to say is that be uncomfortable with change. Mm. When people come in like myself, mm-hmm. who have a very strong sense of who they are, I'm not confident. I just know who I am because of what I've experienced and been through. Mm. I still have a very big heart for people. Mm. Be uncomfortable being sat in a room with people that don't look like you, or aren't the same colour as you, and truly listen to what they have to say. Mm. Because when you do that, the room will not all be white. Mm. It really won't. Representation matters so much. And it's not even a matter. It's not even a matter of bring into the room people that are black because of the sake that they're black. Mm. If you're to look at a blind copy of scripts across the board, and scripts were not written based on the person's skin color of the characters in the script, just across the board, I promise you that the top ten scripts in this country will not all be white. Right. If you're to look at the competency of the best exec producers in the country, they will not all be white. Mm-hmm. Best producers, best commissioners, best channel controllers, best directors, best DOPs, best sparks, best plugs, plug, best everything, they would not all be white. Mm. The same as football teams, same as when you go to corporate organisations, when you go to most places in the world where they truly believe in diversity, which actually then brings statistically, you actually make more money profit-wise when you have more diversity mm-hmm. in organisations. Yeah. When you truly do that and just truly open your heart to want to receive people and not was your cousins doing this here or there, it starts to look different. Mm. Just be uncomfortable with change. Mm. When you when you make someone comfortable and realise that you know what, we need to grow and change, and that change happens mm. naturally. Yeah. Be uncomfortable. Mm. The change is whether y'all like it or not, yeah. <laughs> we're gonna keep pushing. <laughs> <laughs> so just, be, just be ready to feel uncomfortable, but we're coming. <laughs> yes. But it's okay. Mm. change is good we're bringing ideas y'all ain't never thought of in your life <laughs> <laughs> but it's good no but it's good and it will change the landscape for the UK it's going to be a beautiful thing mm, just be uncomfortable with change and embrace it mm. would you say the same Mike? I mean you yeah. you were you know you were on screen talent yeah, I, I was going to say I can't really add to that um, but I agree with everything you said to be honest just, yeah be uncomfortable have the conversations amongst yourselves because at this point there's nothing that we as black people can do if we're not in the room sure of the decision makers, mm. you understand? It's not, I don't. F- I feel like at this stage, it's not a conversation for us to have. It's a conversation for, for the white majority, to have amongst themselves. Mm-hmm. Because if they don't have that conversation, then how will it ever really change? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For me, obviously, reality TV wise, which is the background that I'm coming from, yeah. I just think, 
it's, it's kind of similar to even just mainstream TV in general. Mm. That narrative is 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 becoming played out, and and having gone through it now in the backgrounds, and even I sensed it happening. So I wasn't really too shocked when I came out and I was briefed by my family and, yeah. and I heard what the news, newspapers were writing about me and stuff that was happening in the media. It did not surprise me because being in the environment, I almost, I, and the way like certain conversations were like I was having with certain people and you know certain conversations I was having with producers and stuff. And I, not to say it was all necessarily bad, but it's, it's like I had, I had an inkling right. that there was a certain narrative that was being put on me right and i was clearly right because i came out and that narrative was right yeah. that they they made like they made me out to seem like this you know this black lad game player just hopping from woman to woman mm -hmm. to woman to woman these times that isn't what happened right. in the environment but it's almost like they forced it to the point where they've had to now edit it to make it appear so that it's clever way. editing yeah ex exactly so it's like it's almost like you've you've got to stop that now because these types of shows, like you said, Love Island is the biggest entertainment show. Every single, I will not say every, but okay, probably like 90% of young people watch it. And I'll probably say like 70% of the whole country watches that show. So if you know that the majority of the country is watching this show and, and the way you're going to perceive a certain type of people on this show, or you have an idea of how you're going to perceive them, then just be careful, be mindful, do it in the right way. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And we can't forget the fact that you are a black man. Mm -hmm. So there's already these stereotypes that exist. So the way that they will edit you compared to a white guy would be, the backlash would be completely different. Yeah. I've got an example for that. Yeah. So there was, sure. um, there was a challenge, there was a challenge that we did in the show mm -hmm. um, where we had to look after babies. Right, I remember. And the morning of that challenge, I woke up and we heard the babies crying in the hallway and I, I just could not be bothered. I was not on it. Yeah. I was not on it. I was tired. It had been a bad week for me. Like it was challenging. It was tough. I'm not, I'm not really getting on with like some of the guys in there. And mm -hmm. it was, I just couldn't be, I couldn't be bothered. So I heard the baby and, and I remember um, Priscilla, who I was with at the time, she came up to me and she's like, oh, this baby. I was like, no. Nah, Instantly, yeah, I don't know if it was God. I don't know if it was one of these <laughs> men that had a microphone somewhere there. All I, all I had in my head was, listen, you got to pattern up, bro. Because if you do not act come correct, I know. I I already knew how, they, how I was going to be perceived on the outside. Typical black man, not there for his kids. Run out on, run out on the family. And I could feel it. Because as soon as I said I'm not on it, <laughs> one of the producers called me out. She's like, oh, so you're not a baby type of guy. I was like... Mm, no, no, nah, I am. Just let me let me go take a, it's like reality started yeah, reality right. hit me. So I was like, no, I am. Let me just go take a shower, you know, and clean myself up and then and then obviously from there, not saying that I I purposely done well in the challenge because I didn't want to be perceived that way. I actually enjoyed that challenge mm -hmm. because I, I myself personally I'm very like I've always we've always been brought up to love everyone. Sure. And obviously for me, I brought up in a household where my parents love me. So I know I'm gonna love my kids that mm, way. Mm, mm. But again, it's the fact that I had to think about it and realistically know that the way I'm being perceived is gonna unfortunately represent the majority of black boys in the UK. I have to I have to pattern up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Otherwise it's it's just gonna be a disaster for everyone. Yeah. So I so then obviously I done my thing and we won that challenge. Hey. You know, but then <laughs> That come on, <laughs> that shouldn't be the case yeah. that I'm having to mentally go through all of that. Yeah, because you know what's coming. Yeah, exactly. Because you know I knew what's coming. what's coming and I knew what was coming. Did you feel like when you were on the show, you were representing black people or black men across the country? Up until a certain point, mm -hmm. I had no idea. But it was when newer people started coming in. Yeah. That's when I started realizing. But oh, the man then, when they, when the man oh crap, then. the mantle is <laughs> the <mantle's laughs> on my shoulders. I honestly, yeah. they, I, yeah. they, I didn't realize it until like I was speaking to some of the newer guys and they were like revealing, you know, sneakily little revealing like. little bits on the outside. I was like, oh my God, okay. But this is the <laughs> thing. And I guess like, you know, that black Twitter and, you yeah. know, when, you know, when a black person is in a particular all white space on a TV show, for example, mm. it's almost like, don't let us down. Don't yeah. disgrace us. Yeah. Cause it's already, do you know what I mean? Is yeah. this that immediate and it shouldn't be like that it, it should not be like that because there's plenty of white people on those shows and there's lots of white people that don't feel that almost God. collective <laughs> identity towards another white person on love island they won't be like oh because you're white but because i guess we have a strong collective identity as black people there's almost that like i think people are like looking out for you but they're also like but also don't disgrace us yeah. you know what i mean but like but we love you 
Yeah. But like, if you do this, Grace Austin, the episode. <laughs> it's like, it's like so. bye, you're in your own mate. And so, yeah, that means, I mean, so you kind of felt a bit of that pressure, but then it kind of left. And then it just subsided because in the end, I had to. You got to do myself, you, man. You know, I got to live my life. Yeah, you can't. Got to do me. So I made, I was in there, I made my mistakes. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I done my thing and <laughs> I came out and now here we are. Well, what's that quote that I heard today? Never judge a man by his mistakes. Judging by what he does after his mistakes. Oh, that's a nice quote. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it really does depend on what those mistakes are. Okay, true. You don't know yeah. mm. <laughs> <laughs> No. <The> pause. <laughs> <laughs> um, the last question. So for every podcast guest, you know, this podcast is centered around black joy. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to ask you both, what does black joy mean to you? When you think about black joy, what's kind of the first things that come to mind? Freedom. Mm. Freedom. Freedom. There are different songs. Which one were you doing? <laughs> I was thinking Shatta Wally. Freedom. <laughs> Freedom. <laughs> Freedom. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking um, Beyonce. Okay. Coming. Um, pe- people that do not have to overthink. People that feel liberated inside and mm-hmm. truly unrestricted. Mm. Um, okay. I think of joy. Obviously, we're not a monolithic group, so I can't really say it applies to all of us, but... I think of intelligent, highly mm. intelligent, liberated beings. Amazing. That's allowed to express themselves in any way they mm-hmm. want. That's what. No I restrictions. Think. No restrictions. Just, just, just freedom. I think of all them things mm. and then love mm. and unity, just to add to that as well, because like I said, it's not, it's not holistic, but growing up in my household, around my family, I felt loved, I felt unity, I felt secure. Mm. And I saw the way that my parents also divided that love and gave it out to everybody who we came into contact with, no matter what your skin color was, mm. no matter what your race was, mm-hmm. no matter, as in no, no matter what your ability was, like they, they literally spread that same love to everyone. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I'll be like, ah, how can you love this person? Don't mm. say that. <laughs> but that's that's just what it was. It was just mm. a love and happiness that yeah. was just there. So that's that's my experience of Black Joy. And I love that's it. That's how I describe it to people. And when I think about unity, do you know what I think about? What? The candy dance, honey. Hey! Because <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what you see, what you see that in the party. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> is ready. I feel like I've been doing that dance since I've been in the womb. Yeah. Like I yeah, came out and I just had to do it. Yeah, true. Natural. It's true, it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, thank you so much for coming on Say It Loud. Did oh, you have a blast? I did. I enjoyed lovely. it. Thank been you. Lovely. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Really appreciate you. Thank you for coming on. Pastors Kid Association, PK, right. stand up, <laughs> done no. <laughs> Oh, we're not standing up? No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody, for listening and watching episode five of Say It Loud with the amazing Boteng brothers in the house. Hey, hey, uh, uh, yeah, what? Um, thank you guys so much. Um, make sure to rate, review, and subscribe, and see you soon for episode six. <laughs>